So you have found me then, Ichthyon. I never lost sight of thee, only had I to arrange this meet in places unseen. You have lost sight of the Shadow Dancer. He has taken the prismatic key. Then all is lost. Not so readily. Then you were not so unwise yet. So, tell me. The Cyclops. He can still see it. It is all he sees. Do you feel sorry for him? Hardly. He fashioned it himself. A task so ardent that it damned both of his eyes thusly. So, he brought it on himself and now he mourns it. He'll take it to his grave and never enjoy a moment. So ghastly. And the Kraken. Did you not speak with Malabolgia? I did indeed, but he is unreliable. Lately, he does not feed. What an absurd principle. The golden silver leaf. He is listening. What of it? All is to become madness. To tame a god dragon and have it weave magic. What if he cannot do it? What if he unleash this beast? What if the Kraken try to unmake it? Poseidon would not be pleased. We cannot disarrange it. This could be our undoing. I have a cantrip for such a situation, but we would need all three. We cannot trust the demon wizard. He betrays himself too readily for minor entertainment. I should never have used the blade on him. Every night he relive it. It torments him in dreams. He is too dangerous, even for one of we three. I will contemplate longly in my ivory thought place, the compartment where I hid all of my dreams, and Malabolgia will forget of my going. He will become two of three. The general overdragon was satisfied. My wizard, have you heard of him of late? He anticipated this. Why do you think he took that witch for wife? If Malabolgia were to multiply, were he to shadow twin, all would be an everlasting night, and our oh, god dragon, ever would he sleep. And Malabolgia infiltrate he in his dreams, the demon wizard with his sacrificial shadow twin, for sink his knife into him, and all would become madness under that untold parasite. We are fortuitous in this that our wizard was born beyond the seeing of these three. Plutushion is called he, and the plural wizard, the fully requited gender, that he has the mirroring of this witch, and for she cannot act lest it were a thought that simultaneously occurred to him, and so feeleth she this love of herself in him, for a witch, she has no greater love than what originate inside herself until, so he tells me, she no longer conceives the end of herself and the start of him. This monoarchy, this archetypal wizardry, they have no accounting of a thing greater than three. A warlock, his witch chained to him and bow she her head in shame and humility that defeated her, ensorcelled her, bound her to him, and dragged she wherever he goeth, and so messayeth she. I am wife to him. I love him, my freedom for him, and hangs her head that she should die for this. A Malabolgia, for he can only obliterate his shadow twin, and obliterate himself in so doing. How is it you came to know of this archwizard? Know of him? I know nothing of him but what he allows me to see, that he walk amidst my scarlet battalion, and not a man remarked of him, nor the witch that he keep and spoke to me as though echoed an eternity throughout the offness of my thinking, and said of he, We are we, and come to thee for small sanctuary. And the witch, though beauteous was she, hang her head so none could see, with some perturbation unspoken on her lips. He it is that make all of this, only he. You both saw and unsaw of my coming. I am the shadow dancer, the enigma in plain sight, the man you have known and never known, for closely do I guard my secrets yet and stand here, as though an ordinary man and speak to you in words without jest, 
for I met the fool once before and had no fondness of his scatological japes that hide in him and a tidiness of his heart, the philandering, the obfuscating, the translucent part that I peer through and thus remark, I see the object of your art, and ne'er do I think well, that to please thine corrupt heart thou playest your dumb jest, that make an unpleasant woman riotous yet, that because she thinks not so hard, trusts in a flashy intellect, and leans closer then for love of she this jest, that plucks a ventricle from her heart, and leaves her jaded yet, that for all that she enjoyed, invited calamity into her home, and drunkenness and merry make till, so fat is she, and jolly of jest, that her laughing it stabs into her sides, and you stab her, and you stab her again, and weak across to her daughter, that share you a different type of jest, that she should in thus endure, for what she, she is laughing yet, and never paused to remark this face as one she had seen before, and always led her this merry jest, and round and round, until she has no thoughts left, only laughing and enjoyment, and screaming for what her daughter did yet. And could she be blamed for taking in her heart that which mirthed her over and over again, and her daughter, for what a vicious tart, for what came next, that scatological disorder that follow you wherever you get? And how could a prim and proper daughter be so misled, this joker turns a mother on her head, and for your slackened jester's faith, well, how could a fool be blamed when he is but a fool yet and once no longer no one is fit for laughing do you take your merry jests and off with you to places you've never been where your routine it might be plied yet and what of this key i have it is not time for that yet did you see her i have not devised the meaning of my end so i would not have her take me with her where she will be sent and i too for what i did to her before the kraken and she were wed this living, it has no meaning anyway, so why bother? Why do you have principles? I asked the overman, and he said, If living is nothing, why do you live yet? And handed me his gladius with a look so imploring that I felt the fright of my life flash before my eyes, and I thought, maybe I stab him. Only, what if he had somehow divined an action I would come to regret? My thoughts, they are so feverish of late. What use are they to me that I have them? Were I a beast? Were I the kraken himself, then I could be free to take whatever I wished, for what use is any of it in this nothing life I lead? The nihilist turns his thoughts to psychology. The world is but a game, and I am a player unlike any ever played, and so good I, I think. Perhaps I was the first that has ever been. Perhaps I'm the only, and that being so, well, I am free, so... What can be barred from me, that be it my death somehow elucidated to me? It must have been something I did to myself. And why would I bar myself for any small principle given to me, when I am everything and everything that has ever been, that all of existence is nothing but how I modify myself to better dream for, a singular object, the length of an eternity? How boring would that have been? And perhaps there is a secret I have left in the moments after death that would deliver me from this constant boredom I feel, that I am thus restrained that I cannot properly experiment. For this illusion I made for myself has such a dreadful consistency that, no matter how I poke and prod it, it bears no refashioning. To gain a life of the ultimate stakes, I have already accepted my suicide, for this is better than to expire as an eventuality. And more fun, I feel, that I could make it, wielded I pat this power over death correctly. And sully I further heads, that the kraken should never taste sweet meat, for they should follow me in the absurdity of my life, and squander it most readily for me, for life, be it for living it is then for dying yet, and so why wouldn't you? There is no more sensible path. Ichthyon. Ichthyon. Ichthyon gave a start. What is this calling in my head? None should reach me here. Ichthyon, it is I, the wife of Plutusion. Ichthyon. You are dead. This dream you are living, it is my dream instead. It is but a matter of time now. Dream long, Ichthyon, for this dream is all you have left. You are disappeared. You are overlong. You are the wizard that once was, and not even the cobalt shall save thee now. I give thee an eternity, else step outside of my dream and make thyself, cackled the witch throughout his head. Am I lost, or is this deceit? Step outside of your dream, Ichthyon, and you shall see, but time of my coming, it is not far enough along. And how reached me here, where no other should belong? This spell, it is a troubling one, and yet an eternity she give to me to ponder on. 
so I shall think long. A useful bit of flattery when, to make a person feel good about themselves, you give a second dress to that which they wear plainly on their face, and it makes them giddy and full of warmth that they have been remarked to be this something which is something better than they truly are, something mystical and terrifying, incomprehensible, and as though when you said it her face it lit up and there was this tinkling of a jewel which hung from her heart. Do not play this game over long. Your compliments, they must be varied. Your conditioning for you to do it well must always come unexpectedly. A small piece of praise when they did something and knowing your character expected to get ignored. A piece of positive assurance when they are unsure about a thing but feel you are being objective now when you have told them at all other times before you are not good enough. And position yourself as that which could make them better yet. This tutelage that has been done time and time before which to this new foundling is like a revelation of something which they have not had before, which all have had before in their time when they were valued for its making, only they would not see that, for they have only lived once, and if there should be some fallout, there's a romantic gesture yet that we've seen in some forlorn creature before that we documented in film so all can follow. And look how poignant the grieving of Greta Garbo, that for all her fame was unhappy with it and wanted to be left alone. A letter. A letter from one I have never known before. Can you make the meaning of it, mother? And look at this tidy scroll, so small and lacking artifice, like a hand I've never seen before. And look at the neatness of these thoughts. What is this, Harlequin? What is this untouched thought? Should I be in love, mother? Like you know, never thought to find a match for me with the delicacy of my thinking, as you so remarked before, that I am too naive for the world of men, but... For what is this letter, then, so neatly adorned with this artful scroll? And what are these thoughts that I never thought before? For even when sank deeply my head into books so that I might follow all these magnificent thinkers that came before, and spoil my pretty head, so you have said, that no gentleman loves a woman's whip that she cracks for him against his wit. And what of this, mother? Is this a love interest solely for me, that I might stroke the head of these clever thoughts, and repose myself? For the sleeping in those eyes, that all thoughts revealed unto me as one and one alone? Who is this for a man? Who truly?